Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is go over the idea of functional completeness. So when we make a system, we generally want to know that anything we pass in the system will be safely executed, safely and consistently actually computed, and there won't be any weird edge case where something goes off or we just have some critical failure. So in order to do that, we have some rules about how to create Boolean systems that are complete by design, meaning they can compute anything from it. So let's take a look at how we do that. So again, like I said, we have functional completeness. This is two operative words here. One, we want a functional system. Two, we want that system to be complete. Now, before we can actually talk about the roots of how that works, we need to look at two different Boolean expression formats. That being disjunctive and conjunctive normal form. So the first of these, and the more popular of the two, is going to be disjunctive normal form. So this is a Boolean expression that is a sum of products of literals that is said to be in disjunctive normal form. This is the key words here, sum of products. So a disjunctive normal form DMF is expression always takes a similar form. C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 up to Cm, which is gonna be our last actual term, each of which of these products are referred to as a term. So an example of that would be something like this. Everything encompassed these red brackets is going to be the individual terms. So we see four of them. We have four terms. We have complement of x times y times a complement of z plus x times y plus a complement of w plus y times a complement of z times w. This expression is a sum of four terms. Each term is a product of literals. Complements are allowed, but only when they're applied to individual literals, like the ones that we have up here. There's no instance up here where like this x and y would be complemented together. That's not allowed. In addition, well, no addition operations are applied within the terms as well. Now, if we look at this, this has a few key benefits. One, this is very legible. It's very easy to understand what's happening here. It is a concise and cohesive format. So anything that we write, if we can actually boil that down to disjunctive form, they are fairly robust. They are optimal. There might be ways to further optimize it, but generally that will also yield a disjunctive normal form. So we want to try and get our expressions as simplified as possible and as cohesive as possible. And a benefit from a disjunctive normal form is that it is inherently functionally complete. More on that in a bit. Meanwhile, we also have conjunctive normal form. So a Boolean expression that is a product of sums of literals is said to be in conjunctive normal form, which also might refer to as a CNF. This takes the format of D1 times D2 times D3, so on and so forth, times DM, where these are referred to as clauses. Now, an example of this would be complement of X plus Y plus complement of Z times X plus the complement of Y times W times Y plus the complement of Z plus W. So again, we have product of four clauses. Each term is a sum of literals, or oops, that should be each clause. It's a sum of literals. Complements are only applied to individual literals, and there are no multiplication operations that are applied within the clauses. So again, this is pretty concise, easily understood what's going on, and functionally complete. Now, a set of operations is functionally complete if any Boolean function can be expressed using only operations from that set. You don't need to bring in anything else. You don't need any other trickery going on to do so. And by trickery, I mean like creating a different gate or a different like logical operation beyond that set. Now you can use some Boolean laws, and again, Boolean trickery is what I'm gonna call it, to derive new operations but you only do that using what exists in your actual set. And the set, in this case, is going to be addition, multiplication, and complement, all three of which can be done using disjunctive or conjunctive normal form. 
because they only use addition, multiplication, and complement. Now, is it possible that only one type of operation is sufficient to compute any Boolean function? In other words, is it possible for one singular Boolean operation to be function complete, standalone, by itself? Of the ones that we've already looked at, addition, multiplication, and complement, no. Those will rely on each other to make a function complete system. However, we can look at different operations, use some Boolean laws, and just some decent gate logic to actually create a functionally complete system using only one operation. Now, we need to look at De Morgan's law to do so. Again, while none of the aforementioned operations of addition, complement, and multiplication will be functionally complete on their own, we can easily use NAND and also NOR to create a function complete system. We are going to be focusing on NAND. The two expressions can be multiplied using only addition and complement by applying De Morgan's Law. So De Morgan's Law is special for the main reason that we can take some existing operation like addition or multiplication and get the opposite operation. So if I have some expression that has multiplication here, I can use De Morgan's Law and get addition. Same thing if I have addition, apply Morgan's Law, get multiplication. So to show that, I'm going to take this, apply to Morgan's Law, and get this. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit, using more a mix of Boolean logic and propositional logic, just because I think it's a little bit easier to display exactly what's happening. So we're going to take this negation sign. Or complement. And we are going to distribute it across each literal. So now we end up with the negation of the negation of x times, since we're going to take this addition and alter the operation, I'm just going to make this a, a dot instead of the asterisk, and then do negation of negation y. We're going to apply the double complement law, which means these are going to cancel. Is going to cancel and I get x times y, which is exactly what we wanted. So the Morgan's Law is a key to making NAND function complete. So, since we know that NAND and also NOR are function complete, we should also know that it's possible to create any possible Boolean expression using just NAND gates. Also, if it's not clear that NAND is function complete, we'll just simply make AND, OR, and NOT gates using just a single NAND gate to start with. And if we can create those three, that means we've created the actual set that is the bare minimum we need to create disjunctive and conjunctive normal form, which means that if you can do a DNF or a CNF, you can do basically anything because that system is now function complete. So, let's start. Let's look at not. Now again, I said we're starting with a basic NAND gate, just one. So, if I pass in a zero here, it branches out, zero NAND with zero, anything NANDed with itself is its complement. So zero NAND with zero is one. One NAND with itself is zero. So, we took the binary NAND operation, tied off the inputs, created a unary operation, and by doing so, the way that NAND works, we have now created a NOT gate. So, complement is accounted for. Let's move on. Let's look at AND. So we're going to stay binary. We have two X, two inputs. We'll do X and Y. Now. I'm going to construct the Boolean expression real quick, and what I want to do is let's go ahead and do. Hmm, let's do this. We have x times y from the multiplication aspect of NAND. 
and then we have the negation aspect to get the actual result of that, which is what the inverter here is going to do. I'm going to pass that result into a NOT gate, which adds another inverter, giving us negation of negation of x times y. Double complement log kicks in, and all of a sudden I'm left with just x times y, which is an AND gate. So now we have negation, and we have multiplication. Moving on, we have an OR gate. Now we go back to the Morgan's Law. Again, and keep it binary operation, two inputs, x and y. And I'm going to be able to draw a y eventually. You know what? It's a y. Anyway, we're going to start with this NOT gate. So we have negation of x. We also have the negation of y. And we're going to distribute that into this NAND gate. So we end up with negation of x times the negation of y. And since it's NANDed, we have a negation here. Now looking at this, we can apply De Morgan's Law. Take this negation, distribute it across both of these. Double complement law will kick in, like so. This transforms to addition as well. So these, and we get x plus y, which is our OR gate. And now we have made negation from our NOT gate, multiplication from our AND gate, and addition from our OR gate. So we've made all three of the required operations for a function complete system using just NAND. Now you might look at this and say, hey, well, this is a NOT gate. That's not an AND gate. However, looking back at the actual first slide, our NOT gate here is kind of in disguise. It is a NAND gate in disguise. Remember, that's how we made it. So if we took this and dropped it right here, it would be the exact same system. So we can make this with just three NAND gates. But it's a little bit easier to show that this is a NOT gate that we made. So that's why I look at it that way. Because that is how the actual gate logic works. So, with that being said, we're also going to look at one more. Look at Zor. But this one is just to kind of show that, hey, since we have a function complete system, now we can actually focus on making different types of operations, more complex operations that don't necessarily rely on, you know, the ideas of Boolean addition, Boolean multiplication, Boolean complement. This is just basic exclusive or, and it is a good example and a good starting point to start making more complex gate logic. So we have a basic OR gate, a NAND gate, and an AND gate. Let's go ahead and start with zero, zero. Okay, so if we pass in anything, the results of OR and NAND both need to be one to get a tree output. So one of these gates is going to ensure that this input combination yields a false result. So if we pass in the zeros to OR, we get the zero output, which means the overall output is zero. Because if we do zero NAND with zero, that's a one. But zero ANDed with one ends up being a zero. So that takes care of zero, zero being false. Whoop. Let's look at one, one. Okay. So one or with one, oh, well, that's one. So that side's good. However, just like before, if we NAND something with itself, it ends up being its complement. So one NAND with one is zero. It gives us zero output. So zero Zord with zero is zero. One Zord with one is zero. However, due to how we've set this up, if we make deferring inputs or exclusive inputs, hence the name exclusive or, we should get a true output. Because if we do zero, uh, zero so uh, or with one, we get one, 
zero NAND with one is one, all of a sudden we have a true output, which is exactly what we want. And since everything here, the order doesn't really matter, one zero should give us the exact same logic being a true output. So this shows that we can now actually start making things with our system and for our system. We don't have to worry about, will it compute? Will there be an issue? Are there any edge cases I have to worry about? No. NAND by itself is functionally complete. So if you create a system, built from the ground up using just NAND, you can verify and guarantee that you can create all the necessary aspects of disjunctive and conjunctive normal form which means that since we have and or and not or better known as multiplication addition complement it is function complete so i do hope all that made sense and i hope that the aspect of function completeness and how imperative it is for any system that you're designing yourself whether that be physical simulated or anything I do hope that the actual impact of that is now a bit more apparent because again if you create something you want it to work well you want it to work consistently you want people to like it so you have to worry about edge cases like oh I made something but uh, somebody made something that doesn't compute on it that's not a good system you want it to be consistent and you want it to be safely able to do basically anything that's thrown it. so again it's function complete you can verify with absolute confidence that any at least fully in function can be computed by it. So, hope all that made sense. Hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video.